welcome back to the Tax Advisor and Biz Coach Success Podcast. The purpose of these episodes is to help entrepreneurs become more successful, avoid tax and other business headaches. Remember to tune in frequently as we will be sharing tips, secrets, and expert recommendations in how you can manage your finances, improve wealth, and grow your business. Please like, share, and subscribe. Here's your host, Liz Soria. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome back. This is Liz Soria, your host of the Tax Advisor and Business Coach Success Podcast. And as usual, I have phenomenal guests always joining me, and I'm so honored um, to bring really good quality uh, guests to uh, my show. And today, there's someone that by the name of Paul uh, Finkenstein, if I pronounce that correctly, um, and he and I, we have known each other for really many years. There you go, Paul. And um, it's a pleasure really to have him because not only because we have known each other in person, not like other of my uh, guests, which I have not had the opportunity to meet yet face to face. Uh, Hopefully someday I will. Um, But Paul is a professional photographer and we're going to talk about how he started his business because one of the things we like sharing, um, at least in my podcast, is uh, sharing the, the pros and the cons of what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur uh, because, well, the reality of life is that we all have ups and downs. So no further ado, I'm going to introduce, again, Paul Frankenstein, and he is a professional photographer. Paul, welcome to my show. It's so nice to see you again after such a long time. Liz, it is amazing. Thank you for having me on your show. It's great to see you as well. I think it was about four years ago since we first met at Networking Hispanos in Boca by the Boca Community Center, somewhere around East Boca. I've been in my photography business for a little over a decade, about 12 years since I purchased a 25-foot bus, which I made my studio. I actually have three studio lights, two backgrounds, and I drive up door to door doing portraits in all over Southeast Florida from Miami to the Treasure Coast. Don't forget to remind me about my new book. Ah, there you go. You, you bring it up. Your camera. Okay. Well, the book here is Professional Portraits Help You Stand Out from Your Competition. And of course, you can see it's got my name on there. And it's the same book that you could find on Amazon and Kindle or get a free copy, a free ebook at the Southeast Florida Business Network.com. Excellent. So, Paul, let me ask you something, um, because the audience doesn't know your background like I do. Uh, when it comes to you deciding that it was time for you to start a business, what kind of click on you that it was time because this this is the moment that I need to move forward with uh, becoming independent uh, you know uh, in running a business well it was only in my I was always in my own type of business but that is a super question when do you start to think that you want to have your own business versus working for somebody else correct and of course that is a big step for many because you go from having a salary to not knowing when your paycheck is going to get there. I've, I've been in the finance business as a financial consultant for over 20 years, and I still do that. But while I do that, 12 years ago, I did a lot of photography way back, dating in high school. I photographed the yearbook. I went to school at RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology, for photography. The major at that time was called Professional Photographic Illustration. I moved to Florida, got into finance, and then when mobile businesses started getting into the scene, you saw a lot of food trucks, you saw fashion boutiques, all kinds of mobile businesses, blood mobiles, and I entered the business with a mobile photography studio. There's now about five to 10, every time I Google another business, mobile photography business, I've seen about maybe 10 across the US, in wow. various cities but of course it's still early adopter phase it's still new but not having to pay rent at a retail location is appealing to cut those locations and to get a little bit less in those line items as an accountant accountants talk to, to have less expenses is always a plus of course i had to go out and buy a bus 
but I didn't go out and buy a BMW. I bought a bus instead. Why not? A BMW would have been really, really cool and nice. <laughs> yes, it would have been. <laughs> the top but, down and everything. But that's great. So in other words, you started, when you started, you knew you didn't want a location, what we call brick and mortar, you know, kind of retail store. Uh, you went and your decision now was only to start your business because photography was really your hobby then. So you really converted a, a hobby into a business. Exactly. And I, I figured my brick and mortar location is your location. I show up at your location and give you a little bit of extra branding. Make your neighbors wonder, what is that yellow bus doing in front of your business? Give you some attention. It's not the school bus, by the way. <laughs> and that's exactly what you want from a professional portrait is the attention. But when I come to somebody's business and give somebody a nice, a nicer image, upgrade their portrait from their iPhone photo, it gives their business attention, gives them a better portrait. And yes, it, I wasn't intending it to look like a school bus. I saw a Hummer go by and in the catalog for Hummer, it literally says Hummer yellow. So I told him that's what I want. It look, it looks, it looks nicer and cooler. Actually, just to give you just a flavor for what it looks like, that's it behind me right there. Here's another angle right there. Excellent. And that's what I'm saying. It looks like a school bus. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Sorry about that. It looks like a school bus. Um, no, I love it. It's really nice. And I think the most important thing is that um, we need to have innovations because it's true. I mean, uh, photography business, I'm sure um, no matter what, you have competition like any other industry out there. And the fact that you make it so convenient to come to the person's location, um, I think that's priceless. I mean, because a lot of people now are lacking time. So, uh, so you say that you, you have a complete setup inside your, your, your boss in that case. Um, do you do any specifics um, or do you specialize more just in portrait for, for the face or other type of photographies you do? I specialize in business portraits. So the first two portraits that I take, somebody could use right away for their business cards their websites, their email signature. I even help people set up their email signature as a courtesy with my packages. I also give somebody a, a business video with their photo, survey them a little bit, let, them, let me have some bullet points about their business, make a 30 second video, and that's included with my business portrait service. And the next five images is something that could be a gift like a five by seven, an eight by 10 that you could, a loved one can put on their desk at their office. You could put a desk, uh, have a picture also on your office. Of course, not of yourself, but somebody else can, or you know, somebody at the house. And that service, that way it's, it's something that's in extreme value for just a sole proprietorship, but I also have packages that, that are a little bit more advantageous in price for three people, for five people, and for 10 or more. But I have a complete comprehensive service. I actually list what those items are that are included with the service at headshotsdoortodoor.com. Thank you for that, Paul. So Paul, and one of the things that I really enjoy, um, you know, doing during my, um, I call it conversations. I, I hate using the word interview um, because we're not here in a <laughs> position kind of job, position thing. Uh, but one of the things I, I especially, you know, for newbies and, and people who are starting their businesses, I know it can be very challenging. And the audience that I have is kind of mixed. I have some, you know, that have been, you know, doing very successfully running their businesses and others who are just starting or maybe converting their hobby like you did into a real business, right? And I think that's phenomenal because you did something that you probably already had a passion, uh, you know, doing it and, and you really enjoyed it and you were able to, well, convert it into dollars. And I think that's, you know, fantastic. Um, what were your beginning struggles? I mean, if there's anything that you could offer as a tip uh, to anyone who's listening or watching our, uh, you know, our video, how can they avoid wasting money or perhaps other ways of uh, being able to um, have a good foundation before they really get started? What would be your tips, Paul, please? I'll give you two tips right away that you could put into practice right away. And one of my mentors said, put 
P I P on little pieces of on, on your pad of paper, your yellow pad of paper in front of you. P I P for put into practice. And that way that'll remind you to do it. The first tip would be if you have to invest in equipment, whether it's photo equipment or if you're not in the photo industry, any kind of equipment, you could always go on to YouTube or somewhere at Google or go to eBay. And it's definitely worthwhile. It's it, 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 You don't have to have pride in having brand new everything. It's okay to have used because it is the photographer, it is the expert that knows how to use that tool. If you have a hammer that's 100 years old or you have a hammer that's brand new, do you think you could hammer a nail with a brand new hammer or one that's 100 years old? I have hammers that my grandfather used that still works, like the one that's 100 years old. So that's the first tip is you don't have to have brand new. The second tip is that the number one question I think business owners have, and I'm sure you could probably agree with me, is where do I find these clients and why aren't the clients coming at me like a fire hose? Why don't I have a client? Why is my phone ringing off the hook? Why isn't it ringing off the hook? Well, I put it on silent, but it, it should be ringing off the hook. And I did fall in love with the concept of business networking. I do enjoy meeting people. I have no problem walking up to people. I have no problem passing out a business card, but more importantly, getting somebody else's business card or just networking and just asking how people started their business. The same questions that you're asking me now to get to know people. And that's the reason why I did start SoutheastFloridaBusinessNetwork.com so I could have a way to follow up with people that I've met at live events or online. And I'll, you'll notice there might be some people, you actually the common person probably will not notice, you won't notice, on that list that you might have seen at SoutheastFloridaBusinessNetwork.com. Right. You won't know which ones I met online and which ones I met in person. There are various social media between LinkedIn, Facebook, Alignable, Twitter, YouTube, and 16 other different social media platforms that those are places that you can meet people, not just in person. So and meeting people, people and, and, and finding them. a traffic flow of clients is the, is the main challenge probably people have when they first start their right. business. And that's why I've been building this online network that I could use to follow up with people I met in person and online. And it's getting a little large and I'm looking forward to helping people connect. And if I help other people connect, maybe they'll think of me for the photography. Well, Paul, give and one of the things I wanted to bring up is um, that's that's a, a side kind of gig, or, you know, a, a, a really service that you're providing again to help uh, you know entrepreneurs connect. Because you're right, um, one of the hardest things that I think any business can have, uh, especially if you're starting from scratch, right, um, and, and non-existing uh, you know clients, is the fact that how do you get those quality clients? Because well, that's what we all want. But the reality is, it's difficult. Right, uh, because uh, we, in a traditional way, we used to do a lot of uh, referrals, right? Uh, or we used to do face-to-face -face networking. And like I said, myself, I know that I have stopped doing in-person, you know, networking for the last year and a half. And I think it's good that you bring this up again and, and helping, um, you know, the, the 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 area of South Florida, you know, to connect again because I think it's important. I still believe deeply that the handshake and the eye contact makes it very, very different. Um, and this is probably the closest that we can get, you know, through a camera to look at each other. Um, but I mean, definitely, I think that's really important. So I'm glad that you're doing that because I'm sure it's going to help a lot of businesses. And the topic about today, really about this podcast in the series is about networking on the web. Uh, because not only you doing it in person, but obviously you utilizing all the technology in your favor, correct? Can you explain that a little bit? Sure, absolutely. Especially this platform that we're on. About a year ago, I first introduced myself to Zoom, which is very similar to GoToMeeting, but a lot of people have been telling me that Zoom is more intuitive and easier for them to use than GoToMeeting. But a lot of people in corporate culture, they love GoToMeeting. A lot of people in sole proprietorships like this. Some people just, all technology is just very difficult for them. So uh, another tip, Third tip of the day is just to take it one step at a time. Somebody told me inch by inch is a cinch and yard by yard is hard. 
So with technology and Zoom, I mean, it's very intuitive at the bottom left on what the platform we're using now is a mute button. Uh, but I won't get into the instructions, obviously. You didn't ask me that question. Of, uh, but one thing that I have grasped is to utilize the Zoom platform so I can make videos and have a nice professional background that you see behind me. If it's a picture I took with, I actually took this photo with my iPhone, not my professional really, camera. Come on, Paul, seriously, did you really? Is that your original picture? It's the original picture <laughs> with my iPhone. No way. If a professional... Now, it's the tools. You see, I could use a 100-year-old hammer that Grandpa had in the attic, or I could right. buy a brand new one at office, uh, no, at Home Depot. <laughs> Almost said Office Depot for a hammer. They might have hammers today. And if you know how to use the tool, and, and that's why it pays sometimes to use a professional, like I would rather have a professional do my taxes than somebody else cook my Thank books. You. And I agree. And, and I think that's where your expertise come and you have a good eye. I mean, you have to have a good eye to, to, to take good pictures. Now, again, mm -hmm. you can have the best camera, but the person who's taking the pictures not good. Uh, well, the results, we know what's going to happen. Right. And, and I think is that's, that happens across the board with any, any kind of business, right? Um, you have to bring a little bit of, uh, you know, knowledge and experience into you know your business and i love your background and i know this is a podcast and for some of us uh, you know that are my youtube you know followers they know that um they can watch what's going on because he's changing his background because he uses a really sophisticated technology which is the green um uh, what they call a drape in the back end he's able to replace all these different backgrounds not, not like not like mine mine is original <laughs> so um but definitely he's changing all these different backgrounds uh what is we, it your uh, birthday liz huh is it your birthday when is my it, no no is did it? i miss it yeah i think you missed my birthday that was a, a few months ago <laughs> a few months oh because we have this one <laughs> oh, that's very sweet. That's very nice. Uh, I hope maybe we should bring up something like for um, Halloween. We're close to Halloween. <laughs> so, but Paul, I have to find know, ten more pictures for every month. Do you really? That's awesome. I love it. Actually, I'm gonna look into that because that's fun. I like seeing how you can change the background. Um, and for those who are listening to us, maybe when they have an opportunity, they can actually watch the video, understand what we're talking about with the green screen in the back and how he's changing uh, the background picture, which I love it. Anyhow, Paul, um, tell me a little bit of how people can reach out and get in contact with you. Besides you, you know, your photography business, also your networking, um, because not only you're limited. Uh, well, I would think, correct me here if I'm wrong, they're not limited only to stay within the South Florida, you know, area. They can connect from different areas, right? Because that's why you're doing all these uh, videos too. Right. I actually started to open up Southeast Florida Business Network to anybody that that has an affiliation to Florida. If they have friends, they have guests, they're Excellent. in Florida, they're traveling to and from Florida. Maybe their business services people that are in Florida because I know we have business. My wife has a Medicare business and she handles clients that are in other, other states like Texas and New York. And, and we have, you know, clients there. So I'm sure vice versa. There are people that are in Oregon and Mississippi West and Coast. Montana that they know people in Florida. But I do have most of the people that we meet in person, of course, are at live events in Florida. Right. And who knows? Maybe someday, someday, and I'm just saying. Uh, you might have a, a live, you know, uh, you know, webinar or video where even if you do your networking, other people can join too. So it's they, starting to happen a lot. A lot of networking groups are doing that, right? They're I could see one of my people, including yourself, uh, business professionals on our list could probably do a 20 minute, 30 minute keynote about their profession. And I can invite the list and whoever comes that day we'll have an instant little quickie webinar about somebody's business to spotlight them. And that will be some valuable content. So think about that. Well, that's a bright idea, but I think I have a better one, hopefully. Uh, what about if all the people in your network, everybody has a camera now these days. There's no excuse, right, Paul? I mean, yes. if you have a web camera, which is what, a small investment, you can buy a 
phenomenal camera now for less than fifty dollars, right? It's what I'm using right now. I don't have nothing sophisticated. Look at you. You have a, an amazing uh, microphone and all that. I don't even have that. I use my same webcam for my microphone as it is with the video. But here's the thing: what I want to tell folks is that it takes very little equipment, even even sometimes to have a good connection uh, with you know with with your customers, right? Because no matter what business you are. We need to implement technology. I think it's very important. If we do not, then we're going to fall behind, and we cannot afford to do that. So, uh, Paul, once again, how can the audience reach you? Your 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 phone number, if you want to give up your website, and that way they know sure. what. You could always reach me on my cell at area code five six one three zero two double o fifty one. That's five six one. 302-0051 or on my website, which is mobileportraitpros.com. That's S at the end of pros, mobileportraitpros.com. Or you could always find me at Southeast Florida Business Network.com. That's the Southeast Florida Business Network.com. I picked that because you don't have to spell any of the letters oh my god so you made it really simple and once again real quick remind uh, the folks that you do have that free book even though you're selling it at amazon but for a limited time you're giving it for free on the website is that correct on, on southeast florida business network.com you can pick up a free copy there is five thousand words and 76 pages from professional portraits helping you stand out from your competition by paul finkelstein who is he all right, and they can download it. That's an ebook, right? Or I'm wrong. download the ebook, correct? Okay. Absolutely free. Just put in only your. It asks for a whole bunch of things on the form. Okay. You just need your first name and a valid email, and the next screen will be the ebook. That's excellent. Thank you for doing that for for our audience and everyone else um, that you know they need to get some tips and things like that. It's definitely going to help them, right? So, Paul, as always, it's it's always nice to see you, and I'm glad that we've been able to connect. And again, folks, I mean, remember, networking still works. Um, and it's just that we kind of have to mix things a little bit, again, with technology and so on. So um, I want to thank everyone into our next episode. Thank you, Paul, for being part of our show. Muy it's bueno. Si se puede. Si se puede in Spanish, right? Okay. Well, goodbye, folks. I wish you a lot adios. of success. And adios, Paul. Thank you for being with us. Until the next episode, folks. Bye-bye.